Hello viewers, you are watching NLTV News Now. First, let's go through the headlines. Indian Red Cross Society Nagaland State Branch on Wednesday held its 34th annual general meeting at Dr. Imkong Liba Hall, Raj Bhavan, Kohima. The Excise Department on Tuesday evening seized two trucks carrying banned Indian-made foreign liquor into Nagaland. During a daily routine check, you feel check gate. Supreme Court on Wednesday appointed Justice Rakesh Kumar Jain, former judge of the Punjab and Haryana High Court, to monitor the ongoing probe in the Lakhimpur Kheri violence case. Enforcement Directorate on Wednesday conducted searches at multiple locations of real estate company Supertech offices and residence of its chairman R.K. Arora in a money laundering case. Actress Shilpa Shetty's husband and businessman Raj Kundra's anticipatory bail hearing has been adjourned for November 22nd. And now the news in detail. Mumbai Mayor Kishore Pednekar on Tuesday said that Maharashtra is setting vaccination campaign record in the country. She further said that though Maharashtra is leading the vaccination campaign in Muslim districts like Aurangabad, the pace is slow. According to her, whenever vaccination happened there were religious apprehensions in Muslims. She also said that actors like Salman Khan should encourage Muslims on taking jabs. The Enforcement Directorate on Wednesday conducted searches at multiple locations of real estate company Supertech offices and residence of its chairman A.R.K. Arora in a money laundering case, informed sources. As per the sources, the ED initiated the process of money laundering investigation against Supertech and its chairman R.K. Arora in a case related to the alleged illegal construction of Twin Towers in Noida in collusion with corrupt Noida authority officials. Earlier in October, the Supreme Court ordered to demolish two of its 40-storey towers at its Emerald Court housing project in Noida. Dengue cases are on a rise in the national capital with around 20 to 25 new patients being admitted daily at the Lok Nayak Jayaprakash Narayan Hospital with cases of vector-borne disease, said LNJP Director Suresh Kumar on Tuesday. However, no deaths have been reported in the hospital so far. Delhi has so far reported a total of 5,277 dengue cases this year, of which 2,569 cases were recorded in the last week ending November 13. As per the reports of Municipal Corporation, as many as nine people have died this year due to the vector-borne disease. Delhi has recorded the highest number of dengue cases this year as compared to the previous years from 2016 to 2020. Delhi police on Wednesday arrested a couple for allegedly attempting to enter the premises of Rashtrapati Bhavan in the car on 15th of November. Delhi police said that two people, one male and one female, had forcibly tried to enter Rashtrapati Bhavan under influence of alcohol. Reportedly, they were arrested after an fire was lodged. Meanwhile, the couple was also interrogated by a joint team of central agencies and Delhi police. As reported, the duo has now been sent to judicial custody. Defence Minister Rajnath Singh offered worship on Wednesday at the famed Pitambara Pit in Madhya Pradesh amid high security. Mr Singh arrived in the district headquarters on board a special plane of the Indian Air Force and was received by Madhya Pradesh Home Minister Narottam Mishra. 
Narottam Mishra also accompanied him to the temple. The government must persuade farmers against double burning, the Supreme Court said today as it stressed that it does not want to punish them while Delhi and neighboring cities see an escalating air quality crisis. Chief Justice N.V. Ramana said on Wednesday that they do not want to penalize the farmers as a blame game erupted over the data on farm fires. The Chief Justice pulled up the official concern and said that the debates on TV are causing more pollution than any other sources. The Supreme Court's sharp comments were in response to the back and forth between the government of Delhi and the centre over the stubble burning data. On Monday, the central government had told the court that farm fires have only 10% share in the national capital's severe pollution. A Kamjung Pungmen Kongpongen on from Nagaland becomes the first person for Indian Road Scholars for the year of 2022. Pongen is among the five students in India to pursue through scholarship in the Oxford University. He is a final year philosophy student from St. Stephen's College, New Delhi, under Delhi University. According to Road Scholarship Kohima, Pongen's academic interest lies in philosophy and theology. Besides this, he is a singer, plays piano and classical guitar. Pongen's interests lie in making philosophy more accessible to the society by translating them to his mother language. The other four who got along with Pongen are Dr. Varod Puntang Bekar from Maharashtra, Dr. Ashwarya Vedula from Hyderabad, Ritika Mukherjee from Delhi and Adurija Ghosh from West Bengal. More than 200 top Congress leaders in Jammu and Kashmir have resigned till Wednesday and joined other parties. The top leaders include former Minister MLA's, MLC's, PCC office bearers, district presidents and AICC members who submitted their resignation letter to AICC President Sonia Gandhi, Rahul Gandhi and AICC JNK in charge Secretary Rajni Patil. Some of the leaders who have submitted their resignations are GM Saruri, Jugal Kishore Sharma, Vikar Rasool, Dr. Manohar Lal Sharma, Gulam Nabi Monga, Naresh Gupta, Shubhash Gupta, Amin Bhatt, Anwar Bhatt and Inayat Ali. Their resignations from all posts was in protest against not providing them with an opportunity of being heard about the party matters in Jammu and Kashmir. According to reports, the members even revolted against state unit chief Gulam Ahmad Mir. Meanwhile, the presidentship of Jammu and Kashmir Congress chief Gulam Ahmad Mir Congress in Jammu and Kashmir has fallen into an unprecedentable and unpredictable situation. Delhi Environment Minister Gopal Rai announced emergency measures to reduce pollution on Wednesday. Rai stated that there will be 100% work from home for the government departments till November 21st. He further added, entry of all vehicles in Delhi have been banned except for essential services. Notably, construction work has been banned till November 21st, while educational institutions will remain closed until further orders. Union government reopens the Kartarpur Sahib corridor from Wednesday. Union Home Minister Amit Shah announced on Tuesday that the centre has decided to reopen the corridor from Wednesday. Notably, Kartarpur corridor links Gurudwara Darbar Sahib in Pakistan, the final resting place of the founder of Sikhism, Guru Nanak Dev, to Dera Baba Nanak Shrine in Punjab's Gurudaspur district. According to reports, the visa-free 4.7-kilometer corridor was shut last year due to the COVID-19 pandemic. 
Furthermore, in a series of tweets, Amit Shah said reopening the Kartarpur corridor will benefit a large number of Sikh pilgrims. Meanwhile, Punjab Chief Minister Charanjit Singh Chani informed and welcomed the centre's decision of reopening the Kartarpur corridor and said that the state cabinet will be a part of the Jata, which will visit the historic shrine in Pakistan on November 18th. जिसे बहुत देर बाद पहले तो हम मतलब कि ये इंडिया गवर्नमेंट और पाकिस्तान का पहले का मतलब बहुत पहले से चल रहा था ऐसे तो हम लोग बहुत पहले से हमारे पुरख जो अरदास करते थे ये खुल जाए और खुला है और थोड़े ही चिर के बाद में कोरोना आ गया वो कोरोना के वजह से बंद हो गया और फिर लोगों ने मतलब कि बहुत आस मरादा से किया भी ये खुल जाए तो इससे बहुत लोगों को फायदा भी है और श्रद्धालु घर में माथा टेकने के लिए जाएं तो उनके लिए बहुत बड़ी ये बात है खुशी की लहर है कि ये दोबारा खुल गया और ये गवर्नमेंटों का भी चलो आपस में फिर संधि हुआ है उसकी वजह से ये शुरू हो गया है तो हम लोग यही बस खुश हैं इसी से ही कि हमारे डेराबा बनानक में इधर फिर दोबारा लोग दूर दूर से फ़ौरन से किधर से आएँगे और आके फिर दर्शन करेंगे और हम लोग भी उनको चेहरे देखेंगे बस यही मैं बोलेगा अभी बहुत खुशी है और उसके बाद बंद होने के बावजूद भी संगत आती थी लेकिन वो जा नहीं पाती थी उस बार इसलिए वो वहीं जो बना हुआ स्थल बना हुआ है उसी से दर्शन दूरबीन से करती थी लेकिन आज बहुत खुशी का दिन है कि ये अपना हमारी सरकार ने इसको खोल दिया और ठीक है जो कोविड की अपनी है वो भी साथ साथ चले गई लेकिन मेरे ख्याल से Delhi's air quality on Tuesday saw marginal improvement as it reached to very poor category with air quality index at 389 informed the Central Pollution Control Board earlier on Monday the air quality index was recorded at 353 According to the data provided by the Central Pollution Control Board, the air quality index for good category stands at 0 to 50, satisfactory from 51 to 100, very poor from 301 to 400, while above 401 stands at severe air quality. Indian Red Cross Society Nagaland State Branch on Wednesday held its 34th annual general meeting at Dr M Kongliba Hall Rajbhavan Kohima Furthermore Professor Jagdish Mukhi governor of Nagaland and the president of the IRCSB in his speech said that they both look forward for the increase in the membership of the Red Cross and also their participation in the Red Cross Society
and uh, religious belief linked with The Supreme Court on Wednesday appointed Justice retired Rakesh Kumar Jain, former judge of the Punjab and Haryana High Court, to monitor the ongoing probe in the Lakhimpur Kheri violence case. Three IPS officers have also been inducted in the special investigation team. The Supreme Court will hear the case after the charge sheet is filed and a report is received from Justice Jain. The appointment comes two days after the Uttar Pradesh government agreed to appoint a former High Court judge to monitor the probe into the incident in Lakhimpur Kheri, where eight people, including four farmers, died in October. The national capital on Wednesday showed no improvement in the air quality index as it continued to remain in the very poor category. At 387, according to the data from the Central Pollution Control Board at 10 a.m., the pollution level in the national capital, especially Noida and Gurugram, witnessed a drastic deterioration. Saurav Ganguly, the BCCI president, has taken over Anil Kumbe as the new chairman of the ICC Cricket Council. The governing body confirmed on Wednesday. Kumbe, who took over in 2012, has served the three separate three-year terms of the many key decisions that were taken. The most prominent was to monitor the future of cricket in Afghanistan in the Taliban regime. The development forced Cricket Australia to postpone a one-off test against Afghanistan and the ICC formed a working group which will closely follow the future of cricket in the country, especially women's cricket. Addressing the inaugural session of the 82nd All India Press Presiding Officers Conference on Wednesday via video conferencing, Prime Minister Narendra Modi said on Wednesday that one's duty should be the mantra for the country for the next 25 years. He persuades on this as India heads towards centenary of its independence and says that this message should go out from its parliament and state legislatures. He also asserted that it is our legislature's responsibility to be vigilant about any discordant voice about the country's unity and integrity. It is our unity that preserves our diversity. The Prime Minister also pushed the idea of having a separate time for quality and healthy debates in legislatures, which should be serious, dignified and devoid of political potshots at others. Yeah, I'm so और भारत तांत्रिक है मैं इस महत्वपूर्ण अवसर पर आप सभी को देश की संसद और सभी विधानसभाओं के सभी सदस्यों के और सभी देशवासियों को भी बधाई देता हूं साथियों भारत के लिए लोकतंत्र सिर्फ एक व्यवस्था नहीं है लोकतंत्र भारत का स्वभाव है भारत की सहज प्रवृत्ति है आपकी ये यात्रा इसलिए भी और विशेष हो गई है क्योंकि इस समय भारत अपनी आजादी के 75 साल का पर्व मना रहा है अमृत महोत्सव मना रहा है ये संयोग इस कार्यक्रम की विशिष्टता को तो बढ़ाता ही है साथ ही हमारी जिम्मेदारियों को भी कई गुना कर देता है Two Central Reserve Police Force Jawans and one civilian were injured on Wednesday in a grenade attack at Baramulla district in Jammu and Kashmir. According to reports, the terrorists hurled a grenade at security forces in Pahalhan, Patan area of Baramulla district. 
As per Jammu and Kashmir police, terrorists had lobbed the grenade at a CRPF Naka party. Further details are awaited. India is one of the 95 countries where Pfizer will allow the sale of its COVID-19 pill. Faxloid at a lower cost as per an agreement with the pharmaceutical giant inked on Tuesday with medicine patent pool. United Nations-backed public health organization working to increase access to life-saving medicine for low- and middle-income income countries. Under the terms of the agreement between Pfizer and MPP, qualified generic medicine manufacturers worldwide would be granted sub-licenses to allow Pfizer's experimental medicine, Paxlovid in combination with another drug called Ritonavir to 95 countries, covering up to approximately 53% of the world's population. However, Pfizer medicine has not yet been approved by any regulatory agency in the world. Actress Shilpa Shetty's husband and businessman Raj Kundra's anticipatory bail hearing has been adjourned for November 22nd. Kundra, along with 11 other people, were arrested on July 19 on charges related to the alleged creation of pornographic films. Notably, Mumbai court granted bail to Kundra on 20th of September on a shorty of Rs 50,000. A life-threatening avalanche has hit Nepal Mushtang district last Sunday and has left 11 persons injured, including seven students. As per reports, locals from several villages such as Larjung, Kowang and Nurikot were injured in the avalanche which came rolling down the mountains and descended on the villages below. Days after the avalanche, the, a video of the moment when the snow started to roll down the mountain has been going viral on social media. Furthermore, a team of police personnel has been mobilized in the hit area as this is likely to cause a humanitarian crisis. Notably, the avalanche that occurred on Sunday is reportedly the biggest ever in the area. That is all for now. This is Gargi Deka signing off. Keep watching Nagaland TV for more news and updates.